The Spirit of God calls to our spirits, calling, calling us together, together in worship and service. The Word of God calls us into ministry, calling, calling us to be the church, calling, calling us to love the world, calling, calling us to work for peace each and every day. God of mercy hears our cries. Let us confess our failings and needs to each other and to the one who calls us to come and be healed. Let us pray. Holy God, you have given us many good gifts. Today we thank you for all of them, but we also confess that sometimes we love those gifts more than we love you. We confess wanting more and more things, food, clothes, toys, and money. Forgive us for not being content and thankful. Forgive us our selfishness. Help us to love you more than everything else. In your name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life begun. Believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And as God extends God's grace to us, let us extend that 
and peace to one another, saying the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hey guys, how are you? Good. Me too. Just one more. You guys ever seen this before? A few of you, I think, have played it. But why do you think it's out in the middle of the chancel this morning? Usually it lives over there, but why is it out here? That's right, I'm playing a concert at 3 o'clock this afternoon. You should all be here. Well, I bet you guys have been talking about something down in godly play, like what gifts we give to God. Have you ever talked about that? Yeah. Well, my gift that I give to God and to all of God's people is to play the organ every Sunday. That's pretty cool. And it's a fun gift to give, too. How many of you recognize this? You know it. What about you? Do you remember this I've got peace like a river. Well, guess what? I can play it on all kinds of different sounds. It's like having my own little orchestra up here. I got a trumpet. That's cool. I got a clarinet. I got a flute. I don't. Well, maybe. And I can play it in the pedal rather rudely. <laughs> now listen really carefully. This is how quiet I can make it play. Now hold your ears. Hold your ears. Leland wanted to know if I could make it sound like a drum, and there's a very good possibility I can. That's pretty good, isn't it? Now, I bet you all know this well enough that we can sing it, and they know it, and they know it, so why don't we sing it together before you guys go downstairs? How did the motions go again, Mr. Brent? I've got peace like a river. I've got love like an ocean, and I've got joy like a fountain. You can all do that, I know.
I've got love lotion. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a Okay, why don't you grab a, f a, f a friend's hand, if that's okay with you. Okay, and repeat after me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For all of your gifts. For all of your gifts. Help us to use our gifts. Help us to use our gifts. To serve you. To serve you. In the world. In the world. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. And if you all want to head out that way with Miss Nicole, thank you. Oh God, we give you great thanks for your word that is among us both in the written and in the power of your spirit of Jesus Christ that still lives among us. Open our hearts and our ears to receive your word this morning and be so compelled, oh God, to take it into the world. In Christ's name, amen. Will you please join me in our first reading, Psalm 78. Let us do it responsively. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandments. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
today we continue uh, to hear God's word as found in the Old Testament, a story that is just as much a part of our story as the New Testament is. Today we find ourselves with Elijah, a prophet of Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews. And immediately before this, uh, I don't know how many of you remember the story where um, they were having a battle. Um, what God was going to light the fire of the sacrifice? Was it going to be uh, the prophets of Baal? And Baal would um, bring down his power and light the sacrifice? Or was it going to be the God of the Hebrews, Yahweh, who was going to bring down the fire and start that sacrifice? So what God was going to win? Well, Yahweh won, thanks be to God. Uh, but then everybody got really mad at Elijah and all of the other prophets, and so they killed them all, except for Elijah. And so he goes running into the wilderness, and this is where we find him today. So hear God's word for us from 1 Kings chapter 19. Ahab, the current king at the time, told Jezebel, his wife, the queen, all that Elijah had done and how Ahab had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then Elijah was afraid, and he got up and he fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. So he got up and he ate and he drank, and then he went in the strength of the Lord of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mount of God. And at that place, the mountain, he came to a cave and spent the night there. And then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left. And they are seeking my life to take it away. And he said, God said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after a wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant and thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You shall also appoint Jehu, son of Nifshi, as king over Israel. And you shall appoint Elisha, son of Japhat Abel Melhoa, as prophet in your place. 
Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. And I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, it has been another crazy week. Just a week ago, a mass shooting in a church, no less. More threats of nuclear war or of war in general. More and more allegations and voices seeking justice for sexual violence against women. And I bet that not many of us had much of a response except to hang our heads, shake them perhaps, and feel helpless to do anything else. Personally, I didn't even want to dig into any of it, the history of the perpetrator at the church in Sutherland, Texas, because quite frankly, I'm sick of our inability to have any kind of civil public discord over the use or regulation of guns, Some on my news feed, as usual, blame the NRA and its lobbying efforts, and then on the other side, the NRA equally demonstrated its communication of not needing to regulate anything. More women who have stayed in the silent shadows of shame and pain for a long time are now coming forward in droves, using their voices in a public climate where there is power in numbers. And then there are those, of course, who have said, Why did they wait so long? Violence, misconduct, and corruption have become so much a part of our lives that we have become numb to it. Perhaps we've become like those in the story of the Good Samaritan who walk on by the beaten man on the road because to look at him means we'd have to ask ourselves some questions about why he was there, who hurt him, And what does it mean to follow Jesus in a world where people end up abused, beaten, and left for dead? But many of us, I'm sure, our shock and dismay, frustration and anger has led us to simply go into the wilderness. Either to hide from the complexity and intensity, or for others, deep sadness. Kind of like Elijah in our story. Today, many of us, if you're anything like me, find ourselves sitting with Elijah, having a pity party. Well, I am, at least. I really want to just hide out on Rosendale Road and keep to myself, talking with my neighbor who displays his rebel or Confederate flag, however you want to describe it, for 365 days, which confuses and, quite frankly, offends me To talk with him about racial privilege is not on my list of responsibilities to be up real soon. And remaining silent is not typically my mode for any of you, those of you who know me. (laughs) But that's just where I am right now. And in his despair, God finds Elijah and offers him food, invites him on an even more intense journey for 40 days and 40 nights deeper into the wilderness to Mount Horeb that special place where the Ten Commandments were given to God's people. And as a little aside here, not to even get any more snarky, sometimes I'm totally into this God thing, right? Because God always shows up, always. But then you have these stories where God is kind of like, well, I'm not just going to give you some food and drink and make everything better be your fiery godmother. Well, rather, I'm going to give you food and then have you walk for 40 more days. And I was just hungry and wanted to mope a little. But upon arriving at Mount Horeb after 40 days, God makes God's self known again to Elijah. Depression and utter despair can do that to you. It makes God show up to remind you that all is not lost. Hope is still around, and it may not be in the ways that you've ever known. The message to Elijah was pretty darn direct. Go to Judah, 
appoint new kings and hand over the reins to the next prophets and leaders. And there's still over 7,000 people who serve me. My power of my message of power and love is still true. In moments of frustration, Elijah illustrates for us that it is okay to feel depleted because reality is real. And sometimes we've done all we can. And instead of going into the wilderness and leaving ourselves for dead, God shows up and says, now is not the time and gives us concrete direction for how to move forward. And it may not always be in the sound of sheer silence, after all that glamour of nature's chorus, but God will show up. And you know what I'm talking about, right? That word from a friend, a line in a sermon, or even a character on your favorite TV show that brings you to tears. Yes, I'm convinced that God does use modern technology. I wanted to say that it was about trust. Try harder and trust God. Yes and no. Because sometimes my pity party is really large. (laughs) You know, I'm adamantly not going to trust God. Yet it's funny how things work. God will speak fairly clearly, even if we don't want to hear our call to work in the world. So Elijah and God's story today remind us to, hey... Throw out the pity party and get back to work. Because as people of faith, our work with God doesn't end. It's a lifelong thing. No one is too old, too tired, too young, doesn't know enough or knows too much. Most of us are pretty bad at listening. So when our story takes this turn for Elijah to find God on Mount Horeb, I'm truly ready for that loud, right? I am here, dear mortal, and I will make all things well. No. God is in the absence. God is in the silence. A wise disciple and follower of Jesus Christ, author, poet, Frederick Buechner once wrote, it is in the absence of God that we find God's greatest presence. There's so much visual and auditory noise in our lives that silence is so palpable. It's so shrilling that we turn on the radio so we don't have to be in it. When we're sitting on the side of the mountain deep in the wilderness, God will still speak to us and let us know what our role in this world is. It's not just that you'll know God. But like our leader Jesus will tell the disciples in about 500 years or so after this story, you must also follow. I'm convinced over and over again that the world needs our voice of hope and love more than ever. Rather than our running into the, wor- into the wilderness or perhaps even into our houses of worship to avoid it. Our God yearns for us to live and embody it for the world. We eat what God puts before us because it's what we have. It's what sustains us. God is all that really offers us any true hope in times of confusion and uncertainty. The hard part is that after we have been fed, just like Elijah, since and experience that true presence of God. The pity party needs to be over. And we recognize that we are continually called back into the world to bring God's message. So won't you join me this week and in the weeks ahead as we begin to journey into Advent and Christmas as we walk with the prophets and the young Jesus to recognize what it is that is frustrating about our world and sit together as community, as family, to be fed by God and the God we know when we are together. And then let us respond as grateful 
as just and as generous stewards to what we hear God inviting us to hear. We have got leaders to pick. We've got new leaders to train and hand over the reins to. Things are hard. And God shows up. And God leads us back into that world, offering healing and hope and a powerful vision of love. That's the good news this day. Thanks be to God for God's presence, for God's power, and for God's love, despite the chaos of our world. And God's people say, Amen. Amen.
let us affirm our faith together. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we receive this morning's offering, let us give out of the great abundance that we know from our God.
Holy God, transform us through the power of your spirit to nurture a stewardship for all our days, marked by celebration of your presence, care for your creation, service to others, and justice seeking. We pray in the name of Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. Amen. As we come to pray, we share the joys and the concerns of our community of faith. Uh, just a couple to note today. Uh, prayers for um, Missy, Missy Schaller continue as she had outpatient surgery this past Friday and is doing well, recovering at home. Um, prayers also for uh, Ashley, her daughter, who's been struggling with some health stuff. Um, so continued prayers for her. And I also wanted to pray um, for Martin Hanawalt, but he's here. So, I mean, we can still pray for you. <laughs> he had some surgery, orthopedic surgery, this past oh, week, week and a couple days ago. So he's here and doing well, so we give thanks to God for that. I invite you to share the joys and concerns that you may have. Yeah, we thank God for this place and the meaning that it has for us. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Concerns for our military folk who are serving in harm's way. Yeah. Um, prayers for our military folk who continue um, to be in harm's way. Um, Tracy just wanted us um, to pray and recognize um, those who are in Sutherland um, who uh, were in worship much like we were, we are, um, and who were the victims of violence. So we acknowledge that here this day, um, but yet continue to um, speak voices of hope and of love and of joy that our God um, continually calls us to be and do. Prayers for those who have lost loved ones. Yeah, yes. Um, for the leaders of our country who are seeking peace around the world. Many of those who are behind the scenes, for sure. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yes, we give thanks for our veterans this day. Mm -hmm. Yep, give thanks for all the children in our midst who all decided to come on the same day. <laughs> Let us turn to God in prayer. Holy God, as another week passes, more tragedy and disaster have befallen your earth. A deadly shooting and many other things help us, we pray, O oh God. Our hearts break as we ask you to help and bless all those who have been affected. Please help us to remember wherever each of us is this day, that you are with us in every crisis and in every time of distress and sorrow. Lord, this week many countries observe Remembrance Day, Veterans Day, Armistice Day, days of remembering or honoring members of armed forces who have served or died in the line of duty. Over the last century, many men and women have died and continue to die in service to their countries. We pray your godly hands of safety over every ceremony held this week. We pray for families and friends of the fallen as they remember their loved ones. 
and ask you to fill every grieving heart with peace beyond all measure. Lord, we also take this time to pray for and remember the members of the armed forces who are alive and have returned or are returning, perhaps different from what they left. Men and women who are troubled, angry, hurt, broken. We thank you, O oh God, for facilities, for veteran centers, for medical personnel and social workers who treat and work for, speak to, love on, and help and heal soldiers. We thank you for those who have served and returned wounded who are helping those in distress now. Help us to remember to pray daily for these wounded brothers and sisters, their families and their friends as they go through any and all forms of rehab. Oh Lord, we thank you for your presence here in this place. We acknowledge that you meet each of us. And whatever state we are in this morning, oh God, we ask that we might know your abundant grace, your powerful love, and your penetrating peace. That we would so be overcome with passion to serve you in the world. Help us, oh God, we pray. When you said, God, you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. May we etch these words into our hearts and cling to them, knowing with solid rock faith and solid rock trust that they are true. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just uh, two notes about our life together. Um, Parents, you may pick your children up in the godly playroom. Um, they are going to do some um, slight rehearsing and singing until probably about um, 11 or a little bit after. So if you want to go grab a cup of coffee and sit on one of the adult ed classes, that would be awesome. Uh, and also today at 3, our very own uh, Brent New and Schwander will be offering his gifts, um, great gifts, uh, to us uh, all proceeds from that uh, free will offering will go to support uh, the artist series uh, that we have here, which is one way we bring hope and joy to our community. So let us t stand and uh, offer our final witness of praise to God. <laughs>
People of God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and may the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. And go out into the world with peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one, evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.